This is Roger Hartley from the Bureau of Silly Ideas and partner in the conference. Yeah, I, I too didn't make a PowerPoint, which is um, a first for me. I think it's so I'm a little bit nervous not to have the visual support. So I'm cheating slightly with the home page of the website if it comes up. If it doesn't, that's fine. L let me know when five minutes starts now. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know how to press the start thing there. Um, first of all, it's, it's great to, to be here and to be part of, of making this. It's a bit of a first for me in conferences. And the, the really big lesson that I've learned is next time you're on a beach in Brazil and people ask you to do things, think a bit more, don't just say yes, <laughs> because it, it actually will happen quite quickly. So um, that's, that's why I'm here. I said yes, and I'm very pleased I did. As things, are, as things have been going on, so I've been watching this and I've been noticing a lot of similarities between here and other places around, and there's a couple of big questions that came up in the, from the previous session, and one is, I don't think art is dead unless you start to think it is, in which case it's going to die for you and not anybody else. It's a very personal, subjective thing, and even though I'm an artist and I put things out, art only lives in the person who's receiving it, and that, that has to be a bottom line. And as far as zombies go, zombies are art to a certain extent. But why that art was created, I don't know. And I do think it is possible that they were created for some big marketing mission or to stop us thinking about things or to change our view of something in the past. But that's a, another long story. Um, what I'd like to do now is look at um, how me as an artist, I've changed as I've been doing this sort of thing for a very long time since before we had digital technology. And I've watched that and I've been trying to encompass it and keep it in with my work because I work predominantly in the public spaces and change and twist things that are publicly generally ignored. And that now includes digital worlds. So that's for me, it's part, it's the same thing. There's no difference between what's happening in someone's screen and as someone walks down a high street. And what's getting more and more fascinating is how our public spaces are becoming privately owned. And that's the bit where I start to question and I get scared to a certain extent in how this, how this works. So what I'm trying to find out and question is where does that responsibility role lie and how can we police it and how can we change it and how can we have some sort of control of it. When you look at a, a corporation, because the spaces are no longer being old, owned by individuals, they're being owned by corporations, and that's a different beast to having a lord or a gentle, which would be, so we're sort of getting a corporately run feudal system, which I find quite scary, because when you look at how a corporation behaves compared to a person, and they do psychoanalyze corporations, they're a very simple person who can be um, treated, normally the term is psychopath. Because <laughs> and this, this is true, this is not me just making it up, it's documented, people have gone back and they've looked at how, how are co what do corporations do? And what they basically do is they go for money and property and states and it's very, do that. So we, the only thing that's different though between a corporation psychopath and a real psychopath is there's no natural lifespan, which is really scary because they're not going to die even if you can. So we are in effect, somehow, as we sell off our private land to psychopaths, we haven't got an out as people. And what I'm really interested in, what I want people to think about and give me answers to is I'm, next week I'm being asked to put into the Farrell Review, which is, um, <coughs> was a review that's been cross-party put by DCMS and forgotten his name, politician, met him, shook his hand, very powerful man, should remember. Anyway, um, <laughs> through, through meeting him, I'm going up there to talk, and we're having direct input into how they can start to write policy. The Farrell Review addresses those issues, and that, that the way we look at the built environment and the way countries govern their public space, they need to really address that and start asking what can happen and what can do. At this very moment, most of our land is being sold off, that's normally public, public, and we're, I've got an opportunity to feed in and say, do this, and maybe it won't turn into psychopathic nightmare forever, forever, forever. So think about that and write that down on the tables. The rest of it's silly, and you can go and have a go on a big foot or on a pineapple and stuff like that. Thank you.